Next, we're going to examine the infraspinatus tendon as well as the glenohumeral joint and labrum. We look at these together because they're in the same window. So what I'd like to do is stand behind the patient in this study and use the patient's scapular border as a landmark and follow their scapula across to the acromion that you'll feel. To allow the physician to easily identify the structures, we recommend that you have the patient take their right hand, if we're examining their right shoulder, and, and reach across to the opposite shoulder. And I place the probe, again, facing medially towards the patient, always maintaining contact. What we're able to do with ultrasound, if some of the images appear a bit dark from shadowing, we can adjust with a feature called gain. And there's a control on the bottom of my ultrasound machine that will allow me to brighten the lower aspect of the patient's shoulder. So I'm just going to increase my depth here. Next, I'm visualizing the tendon fibers of the infraspinatus in a fibular pattern, looking for any abnormalities. Oftentimes, if I'm suspecting a problem with the infraspinatus tendon, I'll request the patient to externally rotate their arm. So we're going to have you slowly push your, with your palm up. Just push your arm out against my hand. So next we're going to visualize the patient's glenohumeral joint as well as their posterior labrum. In many patients, we can see their posterior labrum if they have a thin body habitus. And what we're looking for here is the posterior labrum that we can see as a triangular pattern at the inferior aspect of the screen, as well as some cartilage of the glenohumeral joint. This is the site of many intraarticular injections.